Verse 8, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God. So the entire temple was filled up with smoke. Why? Because there's, I'm going to show you soon over here. Remember out of the altar at Revelation 8? Remember, the tribulation saints, they were giving their cry of vengeance, their pain. And it was collecting up and storing God's wrath. So God is about to unleash the wrath right over here. That's crazy. And from his power. So the smoke comes from God's glory. The smoke also comes from God's power. And no man was able to enter into the temple. Why? No one can enter that temple because from God's glory and power, it was filled so much with what? Till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Until God's wrath is fulfilled with these seven plagues from the temple, then they can go in. But they can't go in. Why? Because that's how exceeding God's wrath is. Don't mess with God. Don't mess with God. Here we go. Revelation chapter 16, verse 1. You ready to see this? And I heard a great voice out of the temple. So, a voice booms out of the temple, saying to the seven angels, it says and demands the angels, go your ways. And pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. It's telling the angels, go wherever way you're supposed to go. And then pour out those vials that contains God's wrath upon where? The earth. Okay, look at this, okay? I mean, I just get frustrated reading the following verses because our world will never learn. That's what you're going to see from the passage. Verse 2, and the first went, so the first angel goes out and poured out his vial upon the earth. So he pours out his vial all over the earth. What is this plague? And there fell a noisome and grievous sore. So people are receiving a, a sore that's grievous, a lot of grief, and noisome. Noisome, what that term means is something that's very extreme or chaotic. Sometimes your pastor will uh, go more literal, and he's open to the possibility where he would sometimes say, that it could be a loud sound. But to be more accurate over here, noisome actually means extreme or chaotic. But we can open up to the possibility where it's so extreme that it can make a noise. I can always be open to that, which is why sometimes I'll say that. But look at this. This sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. So those who uh, received the Antichrist mark 666 and those who worshipped his image... They receive this sore. Okay, here's some interesting stuff. Look at Revelation 13. So they receive this sore, the unbelievers. Some of you are probably wondering, what is this sore that the unbeliever is going through? The sore that the unbeliever is going through is believed to be leprosy. It is very likely to be leprosy. It could be a different sore that's possible. But what you're going to see throughout the scripture, it seems more likely to be leprosy. Let's look at something very interesting over here, okay? We're going to look at some scriptural indications. Revelation ch chapter 13. Look at what kind of beast this is at verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a what? Leopard. Okay. So the beast is a leopard, right? Okay. Now look at uh, verse 17, that no, man, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the what? Beast. So, hence, the mark of the beast. See that? Okay, the beast is a what? Leopard, correct? If the beast is a leopard over here, and then this leopard over here, he, um, if that's the beast, right, and it's the mark of the beast or the mark of a leopard, then wait a minute, what is the mark of a leopard? Yeah, black spot, see that? So it's a black spot. Now, this is their mark. It's a black spot. 
Now, think about it. In your Bible, find any other verse and passage in the Bible. Think about it, okay? Which is where you can find the clues. What passage would talk about receiving a black spot, and then this black spot can become a dangerous disease if it changes into a white spot? Think about it. Now, it's a disease that the people received, right, at Revelation 16? What, what passage in the Bible would talk about receiving a black spot, but then it can become a disease? Look at Leviticus 13. That's why we say it's leprosy here. That's why we say it's leprosy. Look at Leviticus chapter 13. Notice that this black spot can morph or... And when it changes into a white spot, that becomes dangerous. That is leprosy. Look at Leviticus chapter 13. Look at verse 42. What is leprosy called? If there be in the bald head or bald forehead a white reddish what? Sore. Is that what it says? It is a leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead. See, the Bible says they received sores, right? Leviticus 13 showed you that the sore can be leprosy. Now look at verse uh, 24. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof there is a hot burning, and the quick flesh that burneth have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white, then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the hair in the bright spot be turned what? White. And it be in sight deeper than the skin, it is a leprosy broken out, of the, uh, broken out of the burning. Did you notice that over there? Let's also look at some other passages. We're going to look at verse uh, 26. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no lower than the skin, but be somewhat what? Dark. See that? Then the priest shall shut him up seven days. So you have to shut that person up seven days if you have a dark colored spot. Why? To see if it will become leprosy. But there's a seven day quarantine. It's giving them that chance. Look at verse 27. And the priest shall look upon him the seventh day. And if it be spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. And if the bright spot stay in his place and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark. It is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. So notice over here that when it's a black spot, that's not where you get leprosy yet. But where you get leprosy is that when it becomes white. So notice that Leviticus 13, that's like practically, or look up a lot of the passages that talk about leprosy or sores. You're going to see too many gold mines. And you're going to see a lot of gold mines where there are scriptural indications that this sore could be leprosy that these people are receiving. Because they have what they have, a black spot originally, but then it becomes dangerous when it becomes white. When it becomes white, then it becomes leprosy. Hence, it is possible that in the tribulation they receive this black mark. But once they receive this black mark, it's going to transform into a white. It's going to trans transform into the color white and become leprosy. That is something over there. That is something over there. Okay, let's return to our main passage at Revelation 16. Let's look at Revelation chapter 16. Let's look at verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. So the second angel pours out the second vial of the plague. Upon where? The sea this time. And it became as the blood of a dead man. So all the waters of the sea, it became the blood of a dead man. That's what happened over here. Water turned into blood. And every living soul died in the sea. Every living thing died in the sea. Now, let me uh, talk about two things here, and then we're going to close. So notice this uh, is very similar to the seven trumpets. you remember that? One of the seven trumpets is where the water turned into blood, correct? 
So that's why what you're going to notice over here, some people, they like to separate uh, the trumpets from the vials and put the trump uh, or like put at the same time frame, so to speak. But the problem is this, is that in Revelation chapter 16, you'll see over here that these seven vials are what? At the latter end of the tribulation. You notice that? The vials are poured out at the end of the tribulation. You might say, why is that? Because we read the passages earlier, Revelation 15, 3, Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, the tribulation saints, they get raptured up to heaven. Not only that, Revelation chapter 14, verse 8, Babylon is fallen. So we're nearing the end of the tribulation over here. So what you got to do with the trumpets and the vials is that you can't conglomerate them as one and the, and the same because they're different. And then two, uh, you can't uh, totally separate the trumpets from the vials. What you're going to have to do is this, is that you're going to have to see that the trumpets and the vials, sometimes they can meet each other, and sometimes there's going to be at different time periods. Trumpets, you're going to see at a much earlier time frame. Because from what we read about the seven trumpets earlier, when we were reading about the seven trumpets, we read about uh, Revelation chapter 11, and then we also looked at uh, Revelation chapter 9. When we read Revelation 9, and then we read uh, 10 and 11, it seems to show that the seven trumpets over here, especially when we reach uh, the final trumpets, the sixth and seventh trumpets, that these were going on while the tribulation saints were on the earth. So the seven trumpets, how they're going to go with the vials, is that uh, the seven trumpets are going to go earlier, and then the vials are going to catch up with the trumpets. That's the idea. So that's where it would fit more likely. It would go with seven trumpets, and then the vials would later catch up with them. Why? Because we see the same thing with the seals too. Did you notice that? The seals started up way early at the beginning of the tribulation. But then the seven trumpets did not start until we reached like the final stages of the seal. So here's how it goes. It makes more sense this way. Where God sends his judgment right here, but then he moves to a different phase of judgment over here. And then he moves to a different phase of judgment over here. Now, this is very true if you look at throughout your Christian life and throughout the entire Bible. It is true that when God sends his judgment upon somebody or a group of people, he will start off with the first stage. And then when he gives a second stage of judgment so that you can learn your lesson, that first stage is not done yet. And then when he gives the second stage, he gives his third stage of judgment, but the second stage is not done yet. The Lord, what you're going to notice is that just like dispensations, he doesn't clean cut it to time periods. Hyper dispensationalists, that's their key problem, is that they always clean off a time period for a certain working of God, but that's not how it works. God doesn't cut off a clean time period. They overlap or they're gradual or they're transitional. You know why? Because God is trying to teach you something. That's why. So before God, uh, before God transition, uh, so let me apply it to your personal life to make it easier. When God is judging you and he's about to cut you off and move to a different person to take care of a calling that he calls you to do, he doesn't cut you off just like that. He gradually cuts off from you while giving judgment upon you. And then he's moving, when he's moving to a different person, he's gradually using that person while he's gradually giving up on you. See? So that's, that's a working of God. The reason why God does that is his infinite grace and mercy. That's why. So despite of wrath, you see over here that God is trying to teach mankind a lesson. Trying to see something. That's why God does things gradually. Because his lesson is not done. That's the idea. He wants them to still learn something. Okay, now the last thing I want to say, which is pretty interesting, is verse 3. I find it interesting, it says, every living soul died in the sea. So there are several theories over here. So remember at Revelation chapter 12, 
Your pastor mentioned about inhabitants and dwellers, not just in the earth, but in where? The sea. So theory number one could be that the Antichrist could set up his own Atlantis kingdom, uh, his aquatic kingdom, not just on the earth, but underneath the water too. He could have cities and kingdoms ruling underwater, and that's not so far-fetched to believe in because we are already having uh, tourist attractions and buildings built where they, people can dine under, underwater, and I, wouldn't, and I wouldn't be surprised eventually living under the water. See that? So that's possibility number one. Possibility number two is that if it says living soul died in the sea, that's very interesting. So meaning then, soul does not have to refer to uh, the real person inside you. It could just be referring to any living being, so to speak. That's the idea. So when you read passages throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, when it talks about soul, it does not have to literally refer to the soul in you, the person. It could refer to a living entity, living being. That's the idea. Because animals obviously don't have souls, right? So this would be obviously referring to the fish of the sea and their living entities or living beings. But that can bring to, then to the third possibility. Could animal have souls then? Because the idea is, is that generally, main, generally it is taught that animals and creatures do not have souls. It is only man that has body, soul, and spirit. But I'll tell you something. We do know animals have bodies. And Ecclesiastes says that an ant, the beast has a spirit. And you can complete that with Revelation 16.3 with the soul. So then could an animal have body, soul, and spirit? When we say animal don't have souls, what we mean by that is, obviously they're not the same soul as man, where they live for eternity, where they have the conscious decisions of mankind of right and wrong and etc., <clears throat> or that they're held accountable as a soul burning in hell for all eternity. So obviously animals don't have that like uh, humans do, but I'll tell you something, a lot of the animals, they, have, uh, they may not have all the same functions as a human soul does, but they do have some inklings of it, which is intensely interesting. There are, uh, there are uh, plants actually, where they would give off a signal when its life is endangered. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, mam mam uh, mammals and your pets, they obviously have emotions, see? That's all from the soul, so to speak. The feelings the, of a person, so to speak. It's just not as advanced as a human's. That's the idea. So that could be one possibility. And then when the animal dies, obviously what? It turns to dust. The Bible says that the spirit of the beast, what? Uh, the spirit of the beast, it just turns downward to the earth. That's the idea. So that, those are some interesting theories to ponder and think about. All right, let's close with a word of prayer.